and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you who know me might know that I particularly enjoy a game. It's kind of a frustrating game. It's the game of golf. And I love the game because it gives me a great opportunity to be outdoors, see the beauty of God's creation in nice manicured areas, and it's fun to visit with fellow golfers along the way and laugh a bit. And also, there's nothing like hitting the ball and striking it solid, as rarely as that might happen sometimes for me. But you, you also have interests. And maybe it's not golfing, but maybe you love being outside gardening. Maybe you like to go fishing or stitching. Or if you're like my wife, you might just enjoy a nice cup of coffee with a book. Now, it may be difficult for some of you to accept a piece of golf instruction from me, a hacker like myself, but here is my tip for the day. Always keep your eye on the ball. And also, be sure to direct the ball's path to a place three to four inches in front of the ball so that your swing properly follows through. Because if you don't, your putt will go left or right, or if you're driving the ball, it might hook or it might slice as well. You'll note this morning, I've got a picture here of a golfer as she perfectly follows through with her stroke. But now what I'm saying here about follow through not only applies to golf, it applies to a lot of different sports. If someone, a quarterback is throwing a football, he must follow through, and it's the same with throwing a baseball or hitting a baseball. It's also important if you're fishing, if you're casting a lure, you need to follow through or if you're fly fishing with a fly. Follow through counts. If you're a carpenter and you're driving nails into wood, you need to follow through with that hammer. Follow through is an essential skill for all of life, completing any project at work or home or school. Parents, as we're getting ready for school to start in about a month or so, we want our kids to follow through and do their homework. Follow through is important. If you ask any employer what is most important to them for their employees, they'll say it's this, that they show up and that they faithfully do what they're asked to do. That's follow through. And we know at times follow through can be so essential and important that it may even cost people their life as it did Friday when five police officers were shot in Dallas. Follow through is a vital skill for us as the members of the body of Christ, his church. And during this time of year, during these seasons after Pentecost, you notice green on the pulpit, on the lectern, on the altar, on stoles, which is symbolic of growth. As we see leaves on the tree and green grass. And we are to grow as the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one in charge of that growth. He's the source to enable us to spiritually follow through and grow. When St. Paul wrote these words to Colossians in today's epistle reading, he thanked them for their receiving the gospel in sincere faith and that they now expressed their faith in love to others. He said they had real follow-through when he says this, we always thank God when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. The Colossians' sincere faith expressed itself in love. And St. Paul honored them. 
And he prayed that they would continue to grow in wisdom, continue to grow in spiritual knowledge, continue to grow in understanding, all in order that they may live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing him in every way, in every good work. God's commandments can be summarized, his ten commandments could be summarized in two. To love God, to love our neighbor. But what often happens? We tire of serving other people. We get tired of serving our family. We're exhausted from our work commitments. And we're frustrated when people are selfish with us. And even when we give our all to others, too few people actually appreciate what we do. So often we fail to bear with the weaknesses of others, and we are not always patient with other people, and we fail to follow through with our own love. So like an inexperienced golfer, we get that right golf grip, and we get and we have that right stance, but when we make the swing, we have no idea where the ball may go. And we might hook or slice and, and err in our relationships with others. We fail to live lives worthy of the Lord. Have you ever wondered what that phrase means to be worthy of the Lord? It actually is an ancient term. It's based on the Greek word axios, which Paul says it's a scale. And the old ancient scale, if something was worthy, it had to weigh one side of the scale as much as the other. And if it wasn't, there was no free trade. It was not a worthy deal. So what Paul is saying to live a life worthy of the Lord is this, that our words and our actions balance and mirror that of Christ Jesus so that they are consistent, so that we are authentic. When our words and actions mirror Christ, then we become Christ to the world. And one of, the, one of the duties for us as the body of Christ is to bear Christ before the conscience of the world and to lovingly serve others without tiring even when our efforts seem hopeless. To help refresh our understanding of what it means to live a life worthy of the Lord and to follow through, review with me again the reading of today's gospel, the story of the Good Samaritan. This unlikely neighbor of the year was not a Jew. He was not a part of the chosen people of God. The Samaritans were disliked by the Jews because they were false teachers. They were heretics. They only held to the first five books of Moses but declined all the prophetic works and declined all the psalms as well. They were almost regarded as worse than Gentiles by the Jews. But this Samaritan goes beyond the call of duty, serving a nearly dead, injured Jewish man. And did you know what the priest and the Levite did? They saw the man, but they what? Passed on by. They ignored the man's suffering. But this good Samaritan felt compassion. His heart went out, and he bandaged his wounds with oil and wine, and he took him on his ambulance at that time, the donkey, to the inn for care. And he even paid for this person's care. 
That is follow through. When was the last time someone offered to pay your hospital bill? But that is the kind of selfless love Paul encourages us all to adopt. But the freedom and the joy and the ability to do that is not here. It's not within. So don't look within yourself to try to find it. Instead, look outside of yourself to see how God rescued you in Christ. Jesus Christ is your good Samaritan who constantly binds up all of your deadly wounds and pays the guilt of all of our debt. St. Paul announces it here. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. When you think how powerful that redemption is and that turn, think about Paul's own life. How he turned from Saul to Paul. Saul was on a path and he was following through to kill all those Christians, all who followed the way. He stood there collecting coats while they were stoning Stephen to death. And while on his way to Damascus, Jesus struck him down with a bright light. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Jesus rescued Paul. Jesus made a U-turn on Paul and forgave all his sins. Jesus Christ does not give up on you and me either. When we fail to live lives worthy of the Lord, when we have failed to follow through in relationships, even though God grew impatient with Israel, when they failed to follow through, he followed through by promising to send a son, Jesus Christ. And the father faithfully did that, sent his son, our good Samaritan, to be rejected. But even in spite of that, Jesus shared compassion, healing, and forgiveness with people, even with those who didn't always appreciate his love. God never makes a U-turn on us. God never bails out on you. Instead, he follows through the end. And we're assured of that here. When we see Jesus impaled on a cross for us, because there we know that on the cross, love died. The Son of God died. But love never, ever died out there. Instead, at the cross, Christ's love and forgiveness are yours and mine through both his gracious word and sacraments. And what a blessing it is to hear that word in our ears and to receive Christ's body and blood at the altar so that his blood is pulsing through our veins so that we can bear Christ to the world. Follow through is a valuable skill. It's a valuable skill for many things, but it's most essential for us spiritually. For our every purpose in life, no matter what it may be, must be in line for God's eternal purpose for our life. You will never have that perfect golf swing. As much as I might even want it, I will, never pay, I will never play like those being paid to play the game of golf. Neither are the present relationships that we have perfect. They are not perfect in every way. However, the Holy Spirit enables you and me through those waters of holy baptism each and every day to say no to me to say no to my sinful self 
to my excuses and to my inactivity. And by resurrection power, Christ in you, Christ in me, strengthen us to follow through where it matters most. He strengthens us so that we can be Christ to our family, Christ to people we work with, Christ to those at school, Christ to those all around us, even being Christ to our own enemies. Since Jesus Christ redeems and forgives you and gladly gives you a share in the eternal inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light, he is with you now and always. May his presence enable you and me to follow through in faith toward him and in fervent love toward one another. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise for the hymn.